Good afternoon, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. Like Joe Graves, I've served in this body for nearly seven years. And although that's nearly twice as long as Fred Durhall's four years, I want to reassure you that this speech will not last 70 minutes. <laughs> it, it, it has, of course, uh, been a privilege and an honor to serve here. But most importantly, it has been a responsibility conferred on me by my constituents, a responsibility that I have always endeavored to take seriously. I thank everyone whose hard work actually allows this institution to function. That includes the clerks, the custodians, the sergeants, the Legislative Services Bureau staff, the maintenance staff, the IT staff, Alice, and everyone in the House Business Office. I'm especially grateful for those who make all of us in this chamber better at our jobs. That starts with our constituents, especially those who take the time to contact our offices to express their points of view, and those who are otherwise engaged activists and advocates. But it also includes both caucus staff and the staff in our individual offices. As the Democratic leader for four years, I had the privilege of working particularly closely with nearly everyone on our caucus staff, and I know that literally everyone there pours their heart and soul into working very hard under often thankless conditions. I respect you, and I thank you. I have had a lot of staff in my individual office over the years, including my four years as leader, and I'm very grateful to each and every one of them. Of particular note are Eli Galgush, Jasmine Brown Moreland, Megan Bergman, Keenan Pontoni, Adrian Heeman, Julie Petrick, now Oakland County Commissioner David Bowman, Wyatt Ludman, Lisa Metcalf, and Aaron Zettel. In a special category are Amy Beard, who was my very first staffer and served with me through thick and thin, Hillary Kipp, Courtney Goddard, Patty Tremblay Pluta, Katie Carey, Jason Ellenberg, my longtime Chief of Staff Todd Cook, and my current staffers Josh Galicki and Oakland County Commissioner-elect Angela Powell. They have been more than staff. They have been and remain dear friends. I have valued all of my colleagues in this chamber because you all bring important perspectives to bear on the issues before us. We collectively represent a broad cross-section of Michigan society, and that's the way it should be. There are a number of colleagues, past and present, who I feel compelled to mention by name, and it wasn't easy to whittle down this list given the sheer number of individuals who I have great respect for. To Jim Ananick, my seatmate during my very first term, you're a dear friend, and I'm very proud of the work you've done as Senate Democratic leader the past four years. To Tommy Stallworth, thank you for your longtime friendship and for your leadership. You were always an intelligent voice of reason who stood up for principle regardless of politics. To Vicki Barnett, you're a dear friend and I've always respected your analytical reasoning and your principled stances on policy. To Harold Haw and David Nathan, I will always blame you for my having become Democratic leader. <laughs> to Gretchen Driscoll, I appreciate your public service over many years and know you will continue to be involved and dedicated to the people of this state. To Marilyn Lane, thank you for your friendship and your fierce advocacy for all things Macomb County. To Derek Miller, you're a good friend, and I regularly miss having your perspective on criminal justice in this body. To Frank Foster, I appreciate your principled commitment to equality, even when it cost you your reelection. To David Knizek and Pat Green, I know that you both still have a bright future in politics. To Brandon Dillon, you're a dear friend, and I have missed your wit and incisive intelligence in this chamber since you left several years ago. To Harvey Santana, I miss you. <laughs> to Winnie Briggs, You've been a friend whose intelligence, concern for constituents, and commitment to service I have always admired. To Kevin Hertel, 
I've always been impressed by your humility, despite your considerable abilities and your legendary family lineage. To Sherry Gay Danyogo, you are a passionate fighter for your principles, and you will always go to the mat for the city of Detroit. To Jim Ellison, I've known you for a long time and have always admired your commitment to service. In very short order, you have proven yourself to be a very able legislator. To Bill Sowerby, I have been impressed by your thoughtful analysis of legislation and your undying commitment to Macomb County. To Jeremy Moss, you've been a longtime friend, you are a talented legislator, and I've been truly impressed by your meteoric rise from staffer to city council member, then state representative, and now state senator-elect. To Mike McCready, you've been a consistent voice of reason and moderation, and you will be missed. To Marin Hauerlach, your independent-minded commitment to principle has always impressed me. To Pam Ferris, Thank you for your integrity and your leadership. To Donna Lazinski, it's been an honor to serve on the insurance committee with you. I have always been impressed by your intelligence and analytical approach to policy. To Yusuf Rabi, I admire your thorough analysis of bills and your consistent commitment to principle. You are often the conscience of our caucus. To Vanessa Guerra, it's been a pleasure serving on the Judiciary Committee with you. I've been impressed both by your intelligence and your great sense of humor. To Brian Elder, I've always been impressed by your passionate, articulate, and moving floor speeches. You have a bright political future ahead of you. To Abdullah Hamoud, I've enjoyed getting to know you and have appreciated your analytical approach to policy and your routine intelligent comments in committee. To Sheldon Neely and Phil Phelps, thank you for your hard-fought advocacy for the people of Flint. To Larry Inman, I've always enjoyed talking with you about Amelia Earhart. <laughs> I, I hope you find her soon so we can all sleep at night. To Ronnie Peterson, our friendship goes back over 10 years now, and it has truly been an honor to serve with you in this body, if only for two years. To Scott Dianda, you're the best retail politician I've ever met. You've surely stopped at every bar, gas station, and party store in the UP. <laughs> to Eric Leuthäuser, Thank you for your indulgence of my frequent and at times lengthy questions in Commerce Committee. To Jim Runstead, I've enjoyed working with you in my capacity of Minority Vice Chair on the Judiciary Committee. You have been open and communicative and have consistently embraced bipartisan collaboration. To Lana Tice, I have enjoyed working with you in my capacity of Minority Vice Chair on the Insurance Committee and I have appreciated your always honest dialogue. To John Walsh, I will always respect your kind demeanor, your thoughtful commitment to shaping sound public policy, and your dedication to public service. To former speaker Jace Bolger, I appreciated our good working relationship, your open communication, and the fact that you always kept your word with me. You stand out during my tenure in the legislature as being an effective speaker at enacting your agenda, often a little too effective from our perspective as Democrats. Our working relationship with one another and with Governor Snyder, then Senate Majority Leader Randy Richerville, and then Senate Democratic Leader Gretchen Whitmer led to three great bipartisan accomplishments, an increase in the minimum wage and indexing it to inflation, the grand bargain to help lift Detroit out of bankruptcy, and the Healthy Michigan program, which expanded Medicaid coverage to over 600,000 Michiganders. To Speaker-elect Chatfield, I've enjoyed working with you. You've been a very capable legislator. 
and I hope that as Speaker, you will genuinely seek bipartisan compromise with Governor-elect Whitmer. To Andy Shore, you were born to be a public servant, and I've always been impressed by your intelligence, your ability to work across the aisle, and your independent-minded dedication to good public policy. The city of Lansing is lucky to have you. To Rudy Hobbs, you're a good friend, and you are a great legislator. I appreciate your service as floor leader during my first term as House Democratic leader. To David Rutledge, I am grateful for your friendship, your kind demeanor, and your service as floor leader during my first term as House Democratic leader. To Leader Sam Singh, I am grateful for your service as floor leader during my second term as House Democratic leader. Your friendship means a lot to me, and you've been a great, great leader this term. To floor leader-elect Chris Gregg, I value your friendship, have always enjoyed working with you, and thank you for your excellent leadership as floor leader this year. I know you will be a great Democratic leader come January. To David LeGrand, you have both a great mind and a great heart, dual traits that are all too rare to find in any one elected official. To Adam Zemke, you've been a dear friend and great colleague. You are a brilliant champion of public education, and this chamber will be worse off as a result of your departure. To Fred Durhall, I love you, brother. Your friendship means the world to me, and I hope that we will continue to work together in the years to come. I'm especially grateful to my parents and brother for all of their support during and throughout my life and during my time here in the House. But as grateful as I am to all of the aforementioned people, when it comes to my service in the House, I am most grateful to the residents of the 29th District. They have consistently put their trust in me to represent them to the best of my ability. I am touched and honored by their faith in me. Speaking of our constituents, despite our having enacted some important legislation, this chamber has left much important and needed work undone for the residents of this state. This unfinished work includes enacting a sustainable long-term policy to fix the roads, guaranteeing that every Michigan resident has affordable access to clean drinking water regardless of their zip code, providing drivers with real long-term relief from astrono astronomically high auto insurance rates, ensuring that students in every district receive a high-quality education and that charter schools are held accountable for the results, and making higher education affordable to all students without their having to take on onerous student debt that takes decades to pay off. Most, if not all, of these issues are core responsibilities of government, and yet our state has abjectly failed to adequately fulfill these basic obligations. I hope that this body, together with the Senate and Governor-elect Whitmer, will finally address these long-standing neglected needs. I am a firm believer the government works best when it works on a bipartisan basis. No party has a monopoly on the truth, and compromise can be a good thing by forcing pragmatic, results-oriented policy approaches to the surface while drowning out ideological extremism on both ends of the spectrum. The state of Michigan has two years of divided government ahead of it. Our elected leaders have a choice to make. One option, would be to try to score political points with their respective party bases, to obstruct, and to crawl into comfortable and familiar ideological nooks and crannies. Sadly, this is the choice that many Americans have made by going to various recesses of the internet and their preferred cable TV network or radio talk show, also that they can hear views they already agree with and not have to be inconvenienced by having to consider different perspectives. This has been destructive to both civil discourse and constructive policy making in our country and would be similarly destructive to our state if elected officials pursue a similar path. The other wiser option is for elected officials to genuinely listen to one another's perspectives, adopt the best ideas from all sides, and endeavor to work together in the best interests of the state. 
Make no mistake, this will be uncomfortable at times. It will take political courage. It will require elected officials to stop caring about who gets credit for things. And yes, it will require compromise. But it is unquestionably what is in the best interest of our state if we are to successfully tackle the most pressing challenges ahead of us. And it is what the people of Michigan want and deserve. Most importantly, I know that members of this chamber are capable of having the open minds, open hearts, and political courage that it demands. Thank you for the opportunity to serve with all of you.